So I'll be starting here with 10, then 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 to take it off. And that's what you'll be seeing now. And once I've loosened all these up and removed these bolts, the head will come off. Now, another important point. There are 10 head bolts, five along the intake side and five along the exhaust side. They are not the same length. The exhaust side are longer. The intake side are shorter. So you have to make sure when you put them back on, you put the right length on the right side. So I'm gonna start taking that loose now. So here's number 10. And I'm gonna crack it loose. And I'm gonna crack loose number nine over here. Okay, and then we go to eight. Then we go to seven over here. Then we go to the next inside. We go here. Then we go here. Then we go to this one. Then we go to this one. Then we go to number two, which is here. And then we go to number one. Now, now all these are loose can just take those bolts out and So now we'll go and we'll take the head off with the intake manifold and put it on the bench. Come on in for a close up. There she is. Nice. Now we can go to work. All right, good. guys, I'm going to start working on the, the head job. We're going to be doing a head job on this one. And the first thing I'm going to do is clean off all of these little lifters and mark them. I'm going to number them just by convention, left to right, top to bottom left to right, top to bottom. I'm gonna number each one of them with a little paint pen, okay? I'm gonna use a paint pen on here, clean it off the oil so it'll stay reasonably. And I'll clean it off with acetone later. But I can't emphasize enough how important it is that these go back in the same location that you take them out of. And I'm not going to go into detail about why, but the reason is they're ground to different, to different sizes and they can't just be put anywhere, okay? So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15, 16 valves. Another really good idea is to, when you take them out, just as a added precaution, put them in the same order that uh, they're in in the car, just in case one of your numbers gets rubbed off or something stupid. So put them in in the same order, put them in a box, and a clean, you know what, this thing is too strong, it's making it, I need a so hard time making. getting them off. Once I put them on there, yeah, little guy, here we go. Let me making my job hard. We don't need any more magnetic power than we need. But anyway, what I'm saying is, put them in order in a box and then put it, the box somewhere out of the, the way of traffic so that it doesn't get bumped and get all jiggled and mixed up and uh, it'll make your life easier to just take your time and be organized and this is not the kind of job you want to rush I guess that's what I say you want to take your time have an organized approach and just do a couple of things like number them and then put them in order and then put them away to prevent headaches of an enormous magnitude. Okay? And there you have it. So now I'll take these, put them away until I'm ready to put them back in and I should have no problems getting the correct ones in the correct location. Okay, so another part that gets overlooked sometimes are the crush washers. I mean, not the crush washers, the thrust washers. Okay, you want to, I'm gonna put mine in this little container here. All right, so you can see. But uh, you don't want to forget that they're there. You don't want to forget to put them back in. So I'm gonna go ahead, see these are the, these are the heavy thrust washers, okay, that go underneath your head bolts. Okay, and they take the load, but you don't want to actually forget to put these in. Okay, so I take them out, I put them in the container, verify that I have them all, and then when time, time to put them, put the head bolts back in, I don't forget to put them back in because I store them with the head bolts. So when I reach for head bolts, I have crush wash, the crush washer container on top of the head bolts. Make sure I didn't miss any. And good job. All right, so now they're in my little container. And I'll put these with my head bolts. New head bolts, crush rockers. Okay, right on top. All right, we got the head flipped over, and now it is time to begin the tedious process of cleaning off this surface. So we're going to clean up the mating surface where the new head gas is going to go, and I'm going to have to clean up these valves. Okay, I'm going to clean them in place so that I don't damage the seats. It's a little guarantee. It's not ideal, but I like to do it that way because it makes sure, 100% sure, I don't damage the seat and I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of perfection of cleaning job by leaving them in place to clean the outside portion. And then I will have to take them off to put the rubbing compound in there to um, reseat the valves. as I can 
around the edges of the valves, the big stuff with the screwdriver, and clean up the rest with the, the little air tool. And then I go after that, I use my little wire brush, my hand wire brush, and you have to just get after it a little bit by hand. It takes a little bit more time, but you get a better job in terms of no mistakes, no damage. The valve seat is completely uh, protected because the, the valve spring is pulling those valves down nice and tight. So you can just work, not haphazardly, but you don't have to worry about being careful about the valve seat. Just clean up all of the uh, residual carbon deposits around the edges of your valve and get it as clean as possible. Then I'll flip it over, we'll pop the valves out and we'll do the other side. Um, with the this is a little tool that we use uh, to, um, yeah, there you go. And then let's see the tip of it. Yeah, this is how you take your, your valves out, your valve keepers out. It's magnetic inside, so go ahead, take one out, Wendy. And the springs are nice and stiff, so you gotta push down with some conviction. And then, so you take a look at those. There you go, up. Can you see that? Can you see the screen? Look, look, can you see the screen? Oh, okay. I didn't see it before. There you go. All right, so that's what it looks like. And that's how you take out the retainers. Go ahead and do another one. Yeah, good job. Here's right. another way to take those out. You just use your little hammer here, put it on, <laughs> and give it a nice little, and voila. There you go. Takes it out nicely. Okay, so I'll show you guys what I do to get the surfaces at least halfway presentable. I've done one, two, and three. So we're gonna do four now. And as you can see, it doesn't really suction cup out that well. It doesn't stick. So what I do, I pull it out, clean, clean the shaft a little bit, get the oil off. And then I put some tape on it to protect it. So I'm gonna put in a drill, okay? So I put, put the uh, tape around the shaft because you don't want anything touching the part of the shaft where the seal, where the seal rests to, to seal the oil. So then put this in like that. Then I use these belt sander sand strips because they're easy for me to, to manage. Okay, let me move this back a little bit. All right, sorry about the light there. It just comes on automatically. But um, turn a little bit more. And I need to smooth this surface up so my suction cup will stick to it. And I also need to get some of this carbon off of the shaft. So watch what happens. Notice this hand has no glove on it. That's because I don't want to get the glove caught in this rotary tool. So you never use gloves of any type with saws, drills, or any kind of a rotary tool because any injury you sustain is going to be exacerbated when it catches that gloves and pulls your whole hand in instead of just nicking you and giving you a cut. So gloves are not safety gloves when you're using rotary tools. Just a safety tip. All right, so here we go. Okay, would you like that for the lights not in your eyes? And I just clean this surface like so. And it's not gonna clean it perfectly, but it's gonna get it smooth enough so that my suction cup will stick to it so that I can so that I can grind the seat. Put the, the rubbing compound and grind the seat, okay? So, and it's really easy to do when you get, this, this grit is 80 grit, okay? So you have good control. You can see how slowly it's taken off the, uh, 
deposits. So you just kind of watch it. You can also do the, the bottom side. Watch where your paper is actually making contact. You can control it, you know, you can stop, you can get some new paper. And so we're not trying to remove metal, we're not trying to get rid of the pitting or anything like that, we're just trying to get rid of all the deposits, the carbon, so that um, it's, it's easier for me to actually make contact with the seat. Get in there. I'm going to do this for each one, so I'm just going to show you the one. Okay, so you get the tape off. I clean it up like so. With a little bit of acetone. And get all of the glue from the tape off of there. And then I take a small touch of, I just use bearing grease because it'll stay on longer. And oil should come off. Just a little bit of, just a dab. Doesn't take much because you're just trying to cook the surface. All right, so this is number four. I don't have to put the number four back on, but you can see the seat here is dirty. And we're going to go ahead and put rubbing palm pad on there. So you know what, I'm going to do that first. I do, I do it twice. I use first uh, the coarse. Use the coarse uh, rubbing compound. Oh, right there, there we go. I use the coarse. And then I use, I take it out, clean it off. Boop. And then I use... I use the fine. I do both of these, okay? So we're going to do the course first. And it doesn't take much. You just put a little on like so and put a little bit around, around the seat. All right, then we put it in the hole like so. All right. And now it should at least give me some suction. Enough suction to turn, turn this valve. Let me kind of get it centered. And then I just go like so. And you can hear it getting finer. And I do this like two or three times and then I do the fine. And that's how I do the valve piece. Next, we'll be, once we're done with all this, we'll flip it over and we'll install the seals. All right, so now we're uh, installing the valve seals. So I put a little bit of grease on here, okay? Just a little bit of bearing grease, because it is a bearing surface. And then I just put the seal down on the valve stem. And press it down. I press it down with the screwdriver on the edges, not touching the rubber. And you want to make sure it seats all the way down, all the way around. And you do that to each one. Put them down, and we're done. The first one, two, three, four, five exhaust valves. You can see the, I'll show you a close up. Those installed right now. So that's what the new seals look like installed. One, two, three, four, five, and number six is, is missing. See, number six has the valve uh, seal removed. So that's what they look like installed. And we still have to do the intakes. So they're all missing. And you just put a little grease on them and slide them all the way down, make sure they seat. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put the valve springs and the um, retainers back in. We do that using this special tool. Now this is the tool we use to remove them. And then with this special insert, it goes into the magnetic chamber here. Boop, and this will reinstall. You just put this pointed part down on the top of your clip in your spring and give it a tap and it reinstalls your uh, your spring and your retainer for you. So you put your spring in like so. You install 
the little keepers first in the little hat, so both of them are in here already. Then you put it right on top of your spring and make sure it's centered on the valve stem, like so. Okay, so when you install your retainer, you want to make sure it's you have it in the cap in advance, like so. You put it on, you use your tool, your little tool, you put this part in and you press down. You want to make sure the valve is well supported underneath. So we just have a socket inside of a rag on each one, but you, it has to be really solidly supported. Then you press down firmly until it clicks. Like that, and you have a nice installed uh, valve ring, valve spring. Okay, so they're all installed, and this is what they should look like before you put your lifters back on over the top of them. Okay, there you go. Okay, we got the surface of the block ready for the head gasket, and in the meantime, I went ahead and threw a, a new water pump in. We had it out. Had it all opened up, so uh, might as well throw in a new water pump. So we're going to take that motor mount right here loose directly and swap out the uh, timing belt as well. Stay tuned. All right, head's ready to go. Thrust washers are in, so there's no way that we can forget to put them in. Head gasket is in place. Ready to go, and it's not upside down. If you've seen any of my other videos, For some have asked before. There is the bypass holes coming off of the water pump here. The bypass holes, well, wanted to see that, so there it is. Now that you watch me place the head back on the engine board. All of the long bolts go in the front, all the short bolts go in the back. So I have them separated here. So I get the right ones in the right place. So these are long. Let's see if it lines up. Right in. Short. These are all short. Thrust washers are already in place. So we always double and triple check. And just kind of double check them. And the top one. All the way in place. We'll get them started, and then we'll do the torque sequence. Starting from the inside and working out. Like a wave, pushing that head gasket out. So in the middle and pushing out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> All right. The torque for this in 1994 Toyota Corolla 7AFE 1.8 is. 22 foot bounds plus 290s. And you have to do them in series, in sequence. You have to do one set, the 22 all the way through. Then you come back and you do one of the 90s all the way through on all of the bolts. And then you go back and you do the last set of 90 degrees on all the bolts. And you do the sequence three times. So I'll let you watch me do it once on the 22 foot pounds, and then I'll, I'll maybe do the first two 90. So let's get okay. That. So the top side is ready to have the the bolts torqued, and on the bottom, while we were at it, we decided to change the rear, the main, the front main engine seal. As you can see, it was leaking pretty bad. So I'm glad we caught that. Okay. Now let's get back to the torque. Okay, so here's number one. And we're going to torque this to 22 foot pounds. There it went. Number two, 22 foot pounds. Just till it clicks. Not a lot. So you go here, 22 foot pounds.
that, a couple more, you get the idea. Twenty-two foot pounds, and finally. Then we go back and we do a 90. Okay, so now I uh, did the last four off camera. I'll let you watch me do a couple of 90s, just so you get the idea what I mean. 90 is you turn your wrench 90 degrees. So you're gonna start, I'm gonna start just a little bit, not parallel with this edge of the head, and I'm gonna bring it just almost, uh, almost perpendicular to this edge. And you do it just like that. at 190. And again, using this same edge for both, just almost parallel with it, then we're going to go almost perpendicular. Just like that. Okay? You do all of them like that, and then you do it again. And that's how you torque. Okay, so this is my final 90s. So I'll let you watch from the other side. And we go 90. Final 90 is pretty tough. And then number two, 90. <coughs> Final 90. <coughs> now we have Wendy uh, torquing down the cam. Good job. Torque for these is 108 inch pounds. Emphasis on the inch pounds. Because I've made the foot pound mistake. And you know what happened to that poor 10 millimeter bolt. So 108 inch pounds is the winning number with the winning um, the, the winning units correct units in inch pound and not foot pound alright we got our initial startup grease on timing belt on all of the other serpentine belts are on and this is going to be our final timing uh, double check make sure that timing is right we check the timing marks on the cams, on the front plate, and we looked at the sprocket hole. So if the timing is correct, this is the exhaust cam. The exhaust cam should be pointing to, the, the rotor on the uh, exhaust cam should be pointing to the number one um, spark plug wire on the rotor, on the rotor cap. So here is the rotor cap, and this is number one right here. That's number one. So if I take this off, the rotor should be pointing pointing to this wire. So let's take it off and see. There it is. Okay, so we know that this is timed correctly. The rotor is turned by, by the exhaust cam. Okay, and so it's pointing to this uh, spark plug wire. And that is the wire that will fire on the next compression stroke. Okay, so we're gonna button her up now. And that is the head gasket, the water pump, and timing belt, and front main engine seal, new water hoses, um, what else? You name it, pretty much, we covered it. We, uh, we did the seals, the valve seals, and we reground, kinda half-assed reground the seats, but that was what was the, within our budget. So that's it for this job. Next you'll see it uh, running. And thanks for watching so far. And have a good time. I'm gonna open the hood, I guess. So.